Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you. Uh, this is the July 1st, 2021 Sustainability Commission meeting. Uh, due to the evolving situation with the COVID-19 novel coronavirus uh, and health recommendations from LA County Health Department, the Sustainability Commission meeting will be available to the public electronically. Due to the social distancing requirements, the public will not be able to attend the meeting. The public is encouraged to watch and participate from the safety of their homes to practice social distancing. The meeting can be viewed on local cable, charter cable channel 6 and AT&T UVerse channel 99, or you can stream online at https colon forward slash forward slash www.glendaleca.gov forward slash government forward slash public dash meeting dash portal. Uh, for public comments and questions during the meeting, please call 818-937-8100. City staff will be submitting these questions and comments in real time to the appropriate person during the Sustainability Commission meeting. And with that, uh, let's uh, go ahead and start with the agenda. Uh, yes, agenda item number one is roll call. Commissioner Kartunian? Yes. Commissioner Khanjan? Here. Commissioner Pinkerton? Here. Vice Chair Werner? Here. Chair Bartusov? Here. Uh, we'll move to Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Uh, let's move to 1B. The agenda for the July 1, 2021 meeting of the Sustainability Commission meeting was posted on June 24, 2021 on the bulletin board outside City Hall. Uh, thank you. Uh, let's move to item 2, approval of the minutes. Approval, item 2A, approval of the minutes of the Commission regular meeting held on June 3, 2021. I have a few comments, if I may. A few corrections on that. Sure. Um, on item C, regulation disposable foodware accessories, um, I may not have been clear on the second bullet point since Los Angeles City hasn't been successful in making this work. Um, we have been successful, so I think it's just, I'm thinking it would be easier if all area cities adopted the same ordinance. So I just want to clarify that. And then also the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh bullet point down through from the bottom, or I'm sorry, the uh, fourth from the bottom, that this is not a full ban. Um, it's not just single-use plastic, it's any type of single-use foodware, regardless what, of the material, paper or plastic. And then the um, next to the last bullet point, looking to washable and biodegradable, I would really um, apply a caveat to the word biodegradable, I think is very misleading in most circumstances. If an item goes to the landfill, you don't want it biodegrading in the landfill, and very few items will biodegrade if they're just tossed out into the environment. So just want to say, I don't, to me, the word biodegradable is a bit of greenwashing. And I would probably su substitute compostable where there are industrial composting facilities available. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments about the minutes? Do we have a motion? Okay. All right, uh, let's take a roll call. Commissioner Kartunian? Yes. Commissioner Khanjan? Yes. Commissioner Pinkerton? Yes. Vice Chair Werner? Yes. Chair Bartusov? Yes. All right, let's move to item three, board member staff comments. Uh, let's do uh, commissioners first. Commissioners, any comments? Seeing none, any? Sure. Uh, 
Great. Uh, Sorry, if I could just remind the commissioners to press the red button on the speaker. To make sure the red light comes on when he's speaking. So we can. It's very dim. Oh, so yeah. does that mean I wasn't on? Um, okay, do we have any uh, staff comments? No. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's move on to item number four, oral communications. Discussion is limited to items within the jurisdiction of the Sustainability Commission. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. Sustainability Commission members may question or respond to the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. The matter may be referred to staff for investigation and report. Uh, Chair, I do not have any colors. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's move on to item five, action items. 5A, selection of student ex officio non-voting members. So, um, Chair Butcher, Supreme Commissioners, we have a short presentation um, regarding this item, and then the chair and the student selection committee um, can talk once we've completed the presentation. Great. If the presentation works. Okay. Um, so we have a motion in front of you approving the selection and appointment of the student ex officio non voting members to the Sustainability Commission. Um, we just thought we'd be begin with a little background about the selection process, how it worked. Um, so November 3rd, the Council adopted Ordinance 5954, amending Title II of the Glendale Municipal Code, adding Chapter 2.85, establishing the Sustainability Commission. In establishing the Sustainability Commission, um, we established a membership with the five members appointed by City Council members, um, each of the members would serve four-year terms for a three-year term limit. Um, but you also wanted to appoint two student ex officio non-voting members to serve a one-year term who would be appointed by the commission. Um, we wanted student voices on the commission to hear what that cohort and that constituents had to say on these types of matters in front of the Sustainability Commission. The goals of the selection process was to be transparent, inclusive, fair, and equitable. We want to be able to hear the student voices on the commission. Um, the Sustainability Commission chose to select, to have an ad hoc selection committee. This was headed up by Vice Chairperson Werner and Commissioner Kanjian. There was an application process where the students had to uh, submit a statement of interest of why they were interested in serving on the commission. They had to meet the eligibility, eligibility criteria, and they had to give us two letters of recommendation. Um, overall, we received eight applications. Um, then the students went through an interview process. This ad hoc selection community um, developed questions, and the eight candidates were interviewed over two week, two week, two week period. And finally, two candidates were selected by the ad hoc selection committee. Um, there is a couple of alternatives in front of the commission. Alternative one, that the Sustainability Commission may instead direct staff to provide all the candidates' applications and select the student members from the entire pool of candidates. Alternative two is for the Sustainability Commission may direct the ad hoc student selection committee to select alternate candidates. And alternative three, the Sustainability Commission may consider any other alternative not proposed by staff. And with that, I hand back to the chair and the ad hoc selection committee. Thank you. Um, yes, we interviewed eight students and it was a, a tough decision. There, were, you know, Most of them would have been very you know, well able to, to do the, the, um, the work and you know, had the right background and so on. And, and, and um, you know, they all made a good impression on us. And, and I know some will be eligible to reapply next year if they're still a student in Glendale or living in Glendale and going to um, 
college elsewhere, and I and I hoped I'll do that. And so, basically, we boiled it down to two students, um, uh, Henry Gang and uh, Andrea Prado. Uh, we felt that both of them had a great combination of um, their backgrounds in um, sustainability and also through volunteering, and that they seem to have the, the right you know, combination of enthusiasm and um, experience and, and thought they would be a good asset. So do I make a motion or <laughs> at this point? To approve the two of them, or I, I thought it'd be nice if they could get up and introduce themselves and tell us a, a little bit about themselves. That since the rest of the the commission didn't get a chance to meet them, Absolutely. so if uh, Henry, if you'd like to come forward first, yes. Uh, hello, members of the commission. My name is Henry Gang, and I'm thrilled at the opportunity to be able to work with you. I am passionate about making sure that Glendale is green and that it is the best place for all the children and all the students that we can live within our natural community and enjoy that all the earth has to offer. And I am really looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Andrea? Yes, in addition to being very qualified, she yeah also happens to live in my neighborhood of Adams Hill. But, <laughs> so you might be able to park carpool and be even greener. <laughs> yeah. Um, so hello, everybody. My name is Andrea Prado. Um, I do live in the community, as Chair, Commissioner Chairwoman has meant, just mentioned. Um, so I think this is a great commission to be a part of, um, you know, to be, um, be a, more a part of the community. Um, I think the city has a lot of great work that needs to be done as well. So I think the initiatives that are put forth um, by this commission are going to be, um, you know, great so that we can see our community prosper and continue to grow. Great. Thank you. Um, did okay. you have any questions that you wanted to ask any of the students, or do you, do you feel like you've heard enough to vote? <laughs> Um, well, first, I want to thank you both for coming and, and also definitely applying your uh, the sheer fact that you're interested is, is very exciting. And we're glad to have received uh, other applications as well. So thank you for your engagement mm -hmm. in this process. Um, do we have uh, commissioners that have any questions or comments? Yes. Just a comment. Thank you again for applying and coming tonight. And I'm sure we'll have a lot of projects to work on together. I'm look, looking forward to it. Very impressive resumes from both of you. So thank you again. Any other comments from the commissioners? Well, I, I'm looking forward to seeing the students join the commission and bringing their energy and enthusiasm and also to engage with their peers uh, to let them know about the commission. Uh, we, you know, we do want to see more engagement. Like as you just saw, no one called in at the beginning of the meeting. So I think a lot of we're the best kept secret in Glendale right now. I think so. Um, you know, feel free to share your experiences with the students, and you know, encourage others to apply next year that that you meet and so on. And I hope that we can get some synergy going with uh, the youth of Glendale. Uh, great. Um, I, I just had one question for our committee uh, members. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about, uh, without getting into details per se, about the other six folks that had uh, applied? And I, I know you had mentioned something about them all being qualified. So how were you able to really narrow it down to um, two out of the eight? Well, um, I developed a a spreadsheet for scoring. So we had um, a certain number of points were allocated for each essay for the, or for the essay for each letter of recommendation. And, um, and then also added some columns for the, how they did on the interviews so that we could quantify everything. But we also looked at every student uh, holistically within the, the context of, you know, the opportunities that would be available to them or not, you know, like some students have to work, you know, maybe they wouldn't have as many um, uh, community service hours, you know, for example. So, so we, we um, looked at diversity as well, um, um, people that are underrepresented on the, the, the commissions in Glendale in general.
and uh, people that we just thought would be would have the right temperament and poise and so on and, and uh, to be able to carry off being up here on on the stand and so on uh, did you have anything to add uh, yeah, we tried to be as objective as possible and then obviously I, I once we got to the interview stage mm -hmm. there was a lot of subjectivity <laughs> um, but we thought that these two candidates were very personable and knowledgeable and they had a lot of fresh ideas that they could assist us with would you mind sharing the spreadsheet not I don't need to see yeah. final scores but just curious what the, the questions are what you know what the criteria are later. yeah yeah I'm glad you asked because I yeah. thought it might work well for you know future yeah. ones so we asked things like um, uh, what did you envision uh, for the future of Glendale you know sustainability wise um, uh, and and we we asked each one if they had any questions for us some did some didn't um, which we thought kind of spoke to whether they put a lot of thought into uh, being on the commission and so on and um, you had a couple of questions yeah here. we specifically wanted to know what they were individually passionate about um, and both of them had experience in sustainability and they impressed us with uh, the, the things they'd done as you can see I mean they have their statements of interest um, in the agenda today so or in our packet today so yeah, we we also asked how they practice sustainability in their own lives um, is that kind of suggests that they have a passion for it and and if there was one thing that uh, like where they thought was the biggest challenge facing Glendale in terms of sustainability. Great. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from commissioners? All right. Uh, do we have a a motion, Rhonda? You had a, a motion officially. Do you want to restate your motion? Okay. <laughs> um, yes. I I would like. I I think we need to vote one one and then the other. I assume right. Uh, or is that two motions, or can we Chair do Chair Sufa, members of the commission, that's not necessary. If you look at the motion in your packet, there's a blank. So oh, okay. it could simply mm -hmm. be a matter of the Sustainability mm -hmm. Commission hereby appoints Henry Gang mm -hmm. and Andrea pra Andrea Prado as student ex officio members, and as it follows in the motion. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, if okay. You, yeah, I don't have It's set that. up for you to be able to just fill in the names. Okay. So can you... Yeah. Uh, so it would just be... <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, I'd like to move that the Sustainability Commission, uh, pursuant to the selection process, as as previously described, uh, appoints the uh, the two candidates that were selected, um, Andrea Prado and Henry Gang, to the as um, student ex officio members of the Sustainability Commission. Second. Great. All right. Let's uh, do a roll call. Commissioner Cartunian? Yes. Panjan? Yes. Pinkerton? Yes. Vice Chair Werner? Yes. Chair Bartosov? Yes. Congratulations. Welcome. <laughs> so, um, and I have a question. Would we be able to swear them in at the next? At their first meeting because I, I know we are all sworn in virtually at home but I didn't know if that's something that we might be that able would to do. be handled through um, uh, the city manager's and, or city clerk's office yes so they would be sworn in before they attended okay. uh, their or they couldn't meeting. be sworn in so. at the, the meeting I just thought that would be special for their families and we'll look into seeing whether or not we okay. can make arrangements for okay. that okay yeah Thank you. The, their official meeting would be potentially the next meeting, correct? It's not happening at this meeting. That's right. correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Again, congratulations. Um, all right. Let's move on to the next item, 5B. Next item on the agenda under auction items, regulation of disposable foodware accessories. Uh, we do have a color on this item. Would you like to take the color in the beginning or in the end? Uh. I'm here today to report back on 
a skip the stuff provision. Um, there's a motion in front of you recommending that the City Council direct staff to prepare an ordinance to regulate the use of disposable foodware accessories. Um, at the Commission meeting of June 3rd, the Commission asked um, staff to come back to them <clears throat> regarding the skip the stuff provision um, in terms of reviewing the Los Angeles single use foodware accessories upon request ordinance what was passed um, just at the June 3rd meeting. And also Commission um, asked that we propose a more compressed implement implementation timeline for the skip the stuff provision if it were to be adopted. Um, I'm going to quickly review um, the skip the stuff provision, but I won't spend too much time on that. Again, a skip the stuff provision would require that disposable foodware accessories be provided upon request only. Um, these types of accessories include, but not limited to, utensils, straws, stirrers, condiment packets, splash sticks, cocktail sticks, toothpicks, napkins, wet wipes, cup lids, cup sleeves, and beverage trays. A skip the stuff provision would apply to food and beverage providers located within the city of Glendale and third party delivery services, um, online orders, and would affect dining customers, drive through customers, and take out customers. Um, the objectives of the skip the stuff provision is to provide food or accessories only upon request, to reduce unnecessary waste reduce potential costs to food restaurant to food restaurant providers and to reduce the use of single use plastics within the city of Glendale. Um, in their proposed ordinance, um, the city um, has written that no food and beverage providers will provide self-service disposable food accessory dispensers or provide or offer disposable food accessories to a dining customer, takeout customer expect a customer request. Not provide any disposable foodware accessories to a drive-through customer, takeout customer, delivery customer without a customer request. Um, staff did an analysis of the um, LA County um, ordinance and tried to highlight some of the differences and these are highlighted in front of you. Um, section 14B um, in their ordinance states a food facility that provides ready-to-eat customers may ask the customer if they would like to be provided any single-use foodware accessories and that the facility makes available for their customers. Um, number two, section 4B, the San Andreas County does not prohibit the use of single-use self-serve dispensers or stations with the exception of single-use plastic stirrers or plastic straws, which are prohibited um, under their ordinance. And just for clarification, none of these are in the, in the City of Glendale ordinance. Um, section 3, 4B, the Sanchez County does not prohibit um, a food facility from providing customers with single-use food accessories if they include as part of a product that is pre-packaged by a manufacturer, such as a pre-packaged salad. Um, there is a safety provision um, within the proposed ordinance for the City of Glendale um, that would provide trays and everything if somebody's going to have multiple um, items to take out, to take away. Um, and the, the, one of the key things um, is the opt-in. So if um, somebody's ordering online, they would have to opt-in to be able to get food, worse, food service wear accessories. Um, an opt-in for accessories would take our orders directly from food service establishments. So they wouldn't be given automatically. You'd have to request them through the online ordering process. Um, I will not read all of this. Um, in the LA County, they made specific reference to um, grocery stores and supermarkets. We did not make that particular reference in the City of Glendale proposed ordinance. So. If the commission decides, we can look to include that or not include that. 
Again, um, if an ordinance is passed, is recommended to pass and goes to City Council, there will be an education campaign targeted at the affected establishments. Um, here is a revised potential um, implementation schedule. Um, so phase one would be a 60-day outreach and education campaign. Phase two, within 90 days, um, of the adoption of the ordinance, um, all employees with 26 or more and third-party delivery services with an online platform shall be required to implement the requirements of the ordinance. And then phase three, anybody else affected by the ordinance um, would need to um, comply. Um, in front of you, there are a number of three alternatives. Recommend that the City Council adopt the Los Angeles County um, form of the single-use foodware accessories ordinance upon request. Um, so adopt their ordinance in entirety. Um, alternative two, the Sustainability Commission may consider not recommending an ordinance until staff have determined the feasibility of prohibiting the use of polystyrene and single-use plastics aimed at food and beverage providers with England or city limits. So that's extending on the current single-use plastic ordinance um, aimed at city facilities. Um, alternate three, the Sustainability Commission may consider any other alternative not presented by staff at this time. And that's it. We'll be available for any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, why don't we move ahead with our caller? Do we still have somebody on the phone? Yes, how many minutes would you like to give to father? Uh, let's give them three minutes. Thank you. Mr. Juarez, you're live. You have three minutes. Great, thank you. Good evening, commissioners. My name is David Juarez, and I am with the California Restaurant Association. I am calling today to request that if you choose to pursue a food accessory to put request, please adopt a similar ordinance to that of LA County. LA County allows for food accessories to be given upon the request of the customer and the offer of the restaurant employee and through self-serving dispensers. LA County ordinance takes into account both the environment and the logistical operations of a restaurant. This option still allows the customer to choose if they want any food accessories or not without disturbing the inner workings of a restaurant. So for these reasons, I hope you introduce a similar ordinance to that of the counties. And also as a side note, we are working with uh, State Assemblywoman Wendy Carrillo on her bill, which uh, also looks to address that food accessories uh, upon request, and uh, it's our understanding that it's going to be very similar to that of LA County as well. So hopefully the city of Glendale also adopt uh, something similar. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, all right, do we have any uh, questions from commissioners? Uh, would, it be possible, oh, sorry, would it be possible to put slide 14 back up, the alternatives? Page. I'm going to just remind commissioners to make sure the microphone's on. I have one comment. Um, the LA ordinance, City of LA, not the county, bans, does not allow customers self serve dispensers of any type. Because in my mind, the reason we did that was if you have a self serve dispenser, you're undermining your own ordinance about these items have to be provided only upon request because it's not on request. It's the items are there for the taking, even though I know the county restricts what items, which types of items are available self-serve. To me, it just undermines the whole purpose of the ordinance, which is really training people that you don't need a lot of these things and that you should ask for these things. So that that is my major point of contention with the county ordinance. Um, I did work on the LA City Ordinance. I would advocate for the LA City Ordinance for one specific reason, which is there are more restaurants in the city of LA than there are in an incorporated county. And to me, it would be easier, therefore, for restaurants, you're gonna have more restaurants that are in the city, and therefore they will, I think it'll be easier for them to comply with. So those are my two comments. Thank you. Uh, all right. Um, could you clarify, I noticed the same thing too, that the self-service provision wasn't part of the Glendale one. So, so you're saying that we should also, we should follow LA and allow that or not because it undermines the, the ordinance? In this case, I would not follow the county of LA's okay. ordinance, which allows some self-serve dispensers. I would default to the city of LA. 
position, which is no self-serve dispensers of any type. Oh, so the city and the county are different. They're okay, different okay. on that, that that's, point. That's right. what threw me off. Okay. I know. It, they're <laughs> very, very similar. The other point of difference is that in L.A., dining customers, we are requiring signage inside the restaurant saying all these things are now available on request. So the customer has to request them. L.A. County can prompt the customer. So that's another point you know where they where they differ so but to me the biggest issue is the self-serve dispensers mm -hmm. I, I understand restaurants are very concerned they don't want angry customers who walk out and possibly forgot to ask for something and drive two miles and discover they don't have everything they want it so I'm fine with prompting of customers but not with self-serve dispensers yeah I agree too I'm I'm inclined to move that we adopt it as presented for um, City of Glendale where we don't allow the self-service, but we do allow prompting of customers to say, you know, would you like catch up with your fries or, you know, or, or a, not a straw, because we don't, well, a paper straw or whatever, but, but, um, but not just automatically giving it. The only issue I have with that is in my personal experience, when they offer it to you and you say yes, they hand you a whole grip of them. And if you were to take them for yourself, you would only take one or two. That recently happened to me with coffee. They gave me like 14 Splendas and all I needed was half. So. Yeah, no, well, that's true, yeah. Although, yes. if I may, I've Nothing. seen the other side as well with self dispensers, mm -hmm. folks <laughs> loading up on, you know, five, six forks when they're just eating a salad. Yeah. Um, so when you yeah. put a self dispenser, I agree with you 100%. Mm -hmm. You're defeating the purpose of limiting yourself. Take it if you really need it. Uh, there's, you know, it's like free pens at, at events. People take it just because it's available. Uh, you know, how many pens can you possibly have in kitchen? You know, question, if I may, would the city of Glendale's ordinance cover food trucks? Um, they're licensed, they're, they're in the city of Glendale, but, and they're an eatery, so they're, it's a gray area for me. Um, um, if the commission would like us to look at that as we make a recommendation, we can definitely take a look at that in more detail. The reason I ask is because um, it's unfair if we require a restaurant uh, mm -hmm. to you know, ask the customer, and right across the street, a food truck. And I agree, if I buy from a food truck, most of the time I'm gonna need a, you know, napkins or utensil, but they should be covered. Uh, they should be included. I'm sorry, you had your hand up. Uh, yes, uh, Commissioner Batrasuf, members of the, uh, of the commission. The, um, if you look on page three of LA counties, the definition of food facility does include food trucks. It's pretty comprehensive. Yep. So your recommendations on this ordinance can be as broad as you need it to be. Uh, and, and you can see for yourself, it's bars, restaurants, coffee shop, fast mm -hmm. food restaurants, food carts, grocery stores, supermarkets, convenience stores, school cafeterias, mm -hmm. hospitals and nursing facilities, snack bars, food trucks, juice bars, farmers markets, temporary food facilities. It's very broad. It's interesting that you say healthcare and um, like the because healthcare and nursing language, facilities. Nursing facilities, but there's a, an exemption in the LA County uh, ordinance that says healthcare facilities are exempt except for their cafeterias, um, which is interesting. Like, where would they? Because when you go to when you eat at the hospital, most hospitals give you metal utensils, mm -hmm. stainless steel utensils that they can disinfect afterwards. So why, you know, exempt healthcare facilities? In what, in what situation would they use it? Uh, if it's an infectious disease, if that's... If, if I may respond, yeah. having uh, <laughs> been to the cafeteria at Glendale Adventist, um, there is a self-serve dispenser yeah. there for your utensils, and they're pla it's plastic ware. Yeah. However, the patients in the rooms, you are absolutely correct, do receive the utensils that can be disinfected and, yep. and, and washed, and they're, it, their food is served on actual plates. So I don't know why they would exempt healthcare facilities and in which situation would the healthcare facility need it other than cafeteria and patients, um, unless somebody brings it from home and uh, it's 
they work at the hospital. Uh, LA City exempted those types of facilities also because some reached out to us and said they do still use disposables in their patient service, mm -hmm. not in their cafeterias. They had completely different models, cafeterias, reusables, okay. patient rooms were disposables, probably a convenience factor, but they, they want to continue with that, that model. So, but okay. I, all good points that you're making. I mean, I'm familiar with the patient uh, food service at Verdugo Hills and Memorial, and to my knowledge, both of them use stainless steel utensils. So if uh, I'm assuming it may not be needed. Disposable maybe for hygiene purposes, given like the pandemic situation, for example. Maybe. maybe. I mean, I haven't been, to be honest, I haven't been to the both facilities during the pandemic. So it could be during an infectious disease, but... Um, to my knowledge, uh, the state, uh, you know, um, exempted all facilities from such laws during the pandemic. So I don't know if it's needed. Um, so, but the, the, the problem that we're creating, to be honest with you, is that we're picking and choosing. Um, take this from LA City, take that from uh, LA County, and then add this on top of it because of Glendale. So <laughs> are we, Overcomplicating this, uh, which you know is more work for for the staff and uh, uh, and for the mm -hmm. end users to comply. Uh, I think it's for that reason I, mm -hmm. I'm more inclined to uh, adopt the or or inclined to suggest that we move ahead with something that's modeled more towards the city of LA than the county. Um, like was mentioned, uh, the county ordinance would only affect unincorporated parts of the county, which is not very big. Um, so if we really want to uh, uh, advocate for uniformity and, and help with the business associations and the affected businesses that work in multiple jurisdictions, uh, my natural inclination would be that we suggest to move forward with whatever the city of LA adopts. Um, not that we should just do something because they're doing it, but I do think their approach is a bit more aggressive than both what we're seeing or what is being suggested in our city, but also in the county as well. So I, I echo those comments and would suggest that we pursue something that's a little bit more aggressive um, so that we can achieve as much as possible through an ordinance such as this. Okay, I'm willing to amend my my uh, motion, and uh, that would just be taking out the part where they can ask if you want these disposables. I think that was the only difference that was in there. And the self-serve right. dispensers. Um, was so the we're taking... Yeah, the self, yeah, the self-serve yeah. was already... That's that's the city is doing self, no self-serve, right? But they were yeah. allowing people to ask? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay, so so we're taking LA's city of LA's, and then with yeah. some changes to customize it for our needs, or or taking stuff out of LA County and including it in LA. That's the idea. Right. Is that the idea? Yeah, but okay. I I agree. The commissioner made very good points about health care facilities because there have been studies done, and they do have very heavy waste streams. So yeah. possibly what we need, if we Maybe we have a nursing home that does not have a commercial dishwasher, for example, you know, so maybe we have a waiver process if they have legitimate reasons why they couldn't comply, if they can't afford to put a commercial dishwasher in. I think that's in there if, if they don't there? have a means of washing, sanitizing okay. things that okay. they're off the hook. Thank you. And the other thing that we would want to include in the LA City is the, um, uh, the suggestion that I made that food trucks be included in the ordinance. Um, if I may ask a question for the staff, what outreach methods uh, are you going to use during the initial period? Uh, is it email distribution list, or do you have a staff member that knocks on these doors? Like, how would a restaurant, a mom and pop restaurant, find out? So, we would endeavor to get a list of all the restaurants operating in Glendale. And through that, do communications out to them, either through our social media programs and then where necessary, um, do leaflets and one-on-one -on -one education um, as that may be needed. 
So, so because they're <coughs> permanent, you would have a distribution list already? Yes, we would okay. have the, um, from LA Department of Health, I think we can obtain okay. the um, licenses, and names, and locations of all the restaurants in Glendale. And then we also have them. the business registration certificate process that right. we can um, search through okay. as well, and we would use social media. Okay. One final question. Um, in both ordinances, there was uh, different levels of um, penalties. First time, second time, third time, and then they had a not to exceed in both cases. Um, what is the, are we going with the LA's uh, penalty tiers? And my suggestion would be, given that this would be new in LA, in Glendale, the first penalty should be simply a warning. Uh, an opportunity, the, a teaching opportunity, instead of penalty, a financial uh, you know, penalty. Uh, that would be my suggestion. If we're going with the city of LA's tiers, my suggestion would be the first penalty, or the first you know, uh, violation should be a warning. Uh, do, do we have, um, do we have that in our proposed so, ordinance? As we create the language of the ordinance, that's where we do the definitions to make sure we pick up things like food trucks. And as we create the language of the ordinance, we look at the penalties and enforcement process too. <clears throat> so we, that will be drafted into the ordinance. And then we can either bring it back to the commission um, at that point for your review, or we can move it on to city council. So if you want us to come back to you with a draft ordinance, we. Um, we can do that. Yeah, <coughs> so I, that makes sure we have to, again, have all the definitions. So and we just wanted, at this point, wanted to, now we know what direction you want us to take in terms of maybe looking more towards um, the city of LA's ordinance. We can then begin to draft that language into the ordinance for you to review. Yeah, yeah we'd like to see the notification include some kind of um, poster sort of thing that could be posted in the, in the break room in multiple languages you know, like Spanish, or Armenian, English, you know, so on, just to make sure that all the, the employees know, know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, to the Vice Chair's comments, we, in LA, we did mailers when we did the plastic straws on request, and we're creating a mailer now for our food or accessories. I will check with my bosses, but I'm sure we're happy to share the artwork if you would like to just use it and modify it for Glendale's use. I'll, I'll double check, I'm not, I don't recall the graphics program. But we have shared documents like that with other cities in the past, so let me let me look into that. Yeah. And Jennifer, yes. can you tell us if the you, you had mentioned signage? Uh, does the city of LA require signage to be in the establishments that are public facing? Yes. What so what we did our mailer, which last time was like a four page newsletter, and then one time we did a just a single sheet. The reverse side of both of those could function as the customer advisory notice, so they didn't have to create or print their own. They could just hang it up. So, But it is required. It is required, though. Oh. So we, where I've seen it mostly, they'll stick it up on the, um, the display, the menu kiosk as you drive through, and then I've seen them at the indoor, the dining customers. So we just thought that would, rather than have the restaurants, restaurants have to go to the trouble of creating their own, we would give that to them. Some of the larger chains obviously did create their own, but we've seen a lot of ours in use too. So. Great, and, and I think, uh, I, I don't know, if maybe they do have this, but uh, I'd like to see it in Glendale that there, there be a phone number or some kind of contact should there be any enforcement questions. Um, so that the public has a clear understanding of how to communicate to the city if they have concerns about um, uh, enforcement of this particular ordinance. Um, that, I think that would be helpful. Um, and then when this does come back, I, I would like to understand clearly um, what the enforcement mechanism will be um, so that if we see establishments, uh, and you know, I'm particularly interested in the larger establishments that are churning out a lot of uh, activity in their establishments, uh, making sure that they're compliant, and if they're not, what, what are the repercussions and next steps uh, on the staff side of things? Um, so I'd be interested in, in seeing that at some point. Um, yeah. oh, I was just gonna say, if I may, in LA, we don't have sufficient, um, I'm sorry, we don't have sufficient inf um, enforcement officers, 
So we rely entirely on customer complaints. We get a lot of complaints from city council members actually, and we have not found anybody ever yet. We do send violation notices, letters, and we track who we've contacted. I think, but to vice chair's comment, training, I think when I would go into restaurants that were in violation occasionally, the staff knew nothing about it. So there seems to be a disconnect. Part of the issue too is the agent of service that receives the mailers may not be the regional manager, may not, these mailers may not get down to the actual individual restaurant managers. So there, there is a learning curve and then you also have to allow time just for training staff. But most were very amenable after, after we explained why we're doing this. Great, uh, and then I, I forgot to mention earlier, I am uh, very happy to see the accelerated or compressed timeline. So I, I appreciate you uh, taking that into account while uh, drafting this ordinance. Um, okay, so uh, does staff have the kind of direction that you need from us? Um, I'm not sure how on earth we would suggest the motion <laughs> other than just to say well, well, to base it largely on <laughs> L.A. And, and that we felt strongly that the self-service packets were undermining the whole you know, purpose of this and that, um, and, you know, for consideration to try to make it consistent with the city as much as possible, but still achieving the goals of the ordinance. Uh, so what what is the desired so schedule? I'm that could possibly delay us by another yeah. nine weeks. Yeah, we've we've already waited another month to see what LA was doing. So I I think we're good with. It moving forward to council with some draft language for them to to exactly. review yeah yeah and just knowing that the you know the, the commission was leaning towards the the la city version and and for not having the, the self-service and of course including food trucks and you know the, the, the most um i guess aggressive one that isn't going to create a um nightmare between um, you know, like a restaurant that's in both locations of having different rules. So. Um, great. Okay. Uh, so, uh, do are we taking a vote on this, or is this uh, was that a te technically a motion? That is a perfectly worded motion. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll make the motion. Uh, do we have a second? Second. <laughs> okay, uh, let's wait, do wait. it. Wait, wait, I'd already moved something. You know, so did that motion die? Oh. Okay, I don't know. But <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's uh, move forward with the roll call. Commissioner Kartunyan? Yes. Commissioner Khanjan? Yes. Commissioner Pinkerton? Yes. Vice Chair Werner? Yes. Chair Bartusov. Yes. <coughs> okay. I'm um, sorry, they couldn't hear the motion through the speakers. Would you mind repeating it? Is your microphone on? It wasn't on, and I'm happy oh, no. to repeat the motion. <laughs> the motion that um, I had uh, uh, suggested for the commission to uh, adopt was the motion, motion recommending the city council direct staff to prepare an ordinance to regulate the use of disposable foodware accessories based on the direction of the Sustainability Commission. Great, thank you for repeating that for our audience. Um, 
And and on on this related note, I'm just curious. It, it just came to me. We had already talked about the beekeeping ordinance that had already gone to council. Um, as it relates to this item, I'm wondering if it's easy enough for staff to shoot us a notice or something when we know that an item like this is being agendized for council, um, particularly if it has come to our commission in the past, just so we're aware of it and can, can follow up with what council is deliberating. That'd be great. Yeah, apologies for that. We can make sure that's done in the future. No worries. Yeah, it was by accident. I, I just decided I was having a I was curious about what they'd be talking about on Tuesday, and I looked. And I went, oh, the bee ordinance. You know, so yeah, so I watched it. But I, I'm yeah. glad it's moving quickly. But yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much. Um, okay, great. Uh, let's move on to item six A. Six A report information. Seek, uh, adjust transition to clean energy. Uh, <clears throat> good afternoon, um, Chair Bartra Sufer and Commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Cartunian sent this um, information to me. Um, he wanted the um, Sustainability Commission to be aware of it. Um, so I'll pass it over to the Commissioner. And please make sure your mic is on. Um, I just, uh, you know, I read it and I thought uh, it was, uh, it included good information that uh, uh, would be beneficial for all of us. Uh, and that's why I wanted to share, just for informational purposes, this is not something that uh, we need to vote on, uh, but uh, we also need to stay up to date on, you know, the recent developments uh, that pertain to sustainability. Uh, so this report covered some of the things, uh, you know, including, uh, to my, you know, surprise, abandoned uh, oil wells and, uh, and gas wells in, in L.A. County, which... Um, I don't know if there's any in, in the city of Glendale, uh, but uh, that was something that was covered in the, uh, in the report as well. That's all. Thank you for s sending this. I think we've looked into it and there aren't any wells here, but um, I'm not 100% of that. But yes, thank you for this. Very interesting. Great, thank you. Does it, uh, any questions or comments about this item? Well, I, one of the things I notice is that a lot of the oil fields that have been redeveloped are being put to good use, and I was surprised to find out that the the Grove, you know, mm -hmm. the uh, Crusoe project there, that that was built on what used to be an oil field. So that really shows that there's potential to help solve some of the issues with um, being able to provide um, affordable housing and so on. So, so I hope that they find a way to remediate a lot of these oil fields so that um, this valuable land, which is often in very um, um, you know, centrally located areas. Um, I grew up seeing some of these oil wells as a kid. Sometimes they'd paint them to look like giant grasshoppers or something so they were less <laughs> obtrusive or something. And as a kid, I thought it was kind of cool. But, but it's certainly uh, something that one doesn't see very often. And so we kind of forget that there's so many oil wells just in and around us. So. I hope that we'll be able to you know, see the day where, where these, um, this valuable land is being put to better use. Uh, great, okay. Uh, shall we move on to the next item, uh, number seven? Item number seven, sustainability office updates, 7A, sustainability interim projects, 7B, climate action plan, 7C, August agenda update. Thank you, um, Chair Bartrosuf and the Sustainability Commissioners. Um, I just want to provide a quick update on some of the work that's been done in the Sustainability Office. I'm excited to um, say we have a student intern from La Crescenta High School, Alex, who's going to be working with us over the summer. Um, and Alex has got the uninvenable um, project of working to establish um, composting um, in the city of Glendale. So he's working with LA Compost. Um, our, our public's work um, group to try and establish um, compost areas within the city where people can A, bring their food waste or compost waste and it will get composted and either be used on site or other options where people can bring something and then take the compost back home. So um, 
it's a, it's a nice project for Alex to work on this summer, so hopefully we'll get some traction on that. Um, <clears throat> we've been um, undertaking uh, Milanus, um, our other intern, um, is working on um, education materials. And in July, we're going to do an education outreach program focused on being plastic free. So we're going to provide tips of how one can live plastic free. And then we're going to try and um, develop an action item to the education program where we're going to ask people to pledge to be um, plastic free for a period of time. And then for them to send us a little narrative short essay on how it was and how they found it, the experience, good or bad. And then some of the best essays will like, highlight and get that back out to the community. So really trying to educate the community on this, um, on this very important issue. Um, as you may be aware, um, the city adopted its 2020-2021 um, budget. Um, and within that budget, um, there is money for the city to develop and prepare a climate action plan. So we are in the process of researching and writing a request for proposal for that climate action plan and adaptation plan. Um, it is um, our intention to bring that to the Sustainability Commission in the August meeting for you to review the request for proposal and for the commission to be able to have input into that request for proposal to make sure that you feel it's complete and addresses the issues that you think need to be addressed within that, equity issues such like. Um, so we are doing a lot of research on equity regarding climate action plans. Um, so we, we look forward to presenting that to the commission in August. Can I ask a question about that yes, particular sir. item? Um, so it would come, a draft RFP would come to us in August. What's what's the timeline beyond that? When do you anticipate it going to council for? In set, we'd like that to go to council in September. Okay. So um, it's going to, we have, also we have the internal sustainability working group. So they're gonna take a look at it too. I think we have that meeting in the next couple of weeks. So between yourselves and them, um, there's going to be input into that, and then we can send that to the council. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Um, <clears throat> and again, in August, um, Glendale Water and Power will be doing their presentation. Um, the new director of Glendale Water and Power just asked us to delay that for a month, and as he's just taken that position, um, but that is scheduled for that. <clears throat> and we'll also be doing um, the environmental preferable purchasing presentation. Um, to the Commission um, outlining what we think is an appropriate program for the City of Glendale. I'm looking forward to getting the Commission's input into that, um, into that program as we develop it going forward. And that is it. Great. Thank you. Uh, does anybody have any questions or comments about item number eight? Um, yes, I had a question. You said GWP is postponing. I, I, I didn't catch what the reason was. So um, GWP has a new director. Um, so we were supposed, um, we did ask him to come to this meeting, but he requested that um, we delay until the August meeting. So he has time to prepare what he'd like to say and respond to the questions that okay. you all provided to. So I have time to ask more questions then it sounds like. Um, yes, you do, and um, <laughs> um, we'd ask that the questions be directly related to the sustainability efforts of Glendale Water and Power, mm -hmm. so that's provided to you. Right. Okay, um, I also had a question. I noticed the city has updated the website, and it was very difficult to find anything on the Sustainability Commission, but um, right on the main page it says sustainability office but then there's no like link to go from there to the commission or or like you wouldn't know looking at that page that we had a, we had a sustainability commission is there some way we could um, cross link to that so i can ask a question but as far as i am aware <clears throat> um all the commissions have their own website or have had their own area to look at under commissions and committees and you click on that and you find a list of all the commissions, and within that sustainability commission, 
What we can do on the sustainability website is make reference to that, make reference to that we do have a new established sustainability commission. So yes. So I tried doing a search under sustainability commission and just got a dead link from, I guess it was from the old website or something. So not, not everyone is as familiar with the city of Glendale's structure of the website to know to go into the boards and commission thing. They're probably just going to do a search and then think we don't have one. So. Okay. Um, but I know it's like the Commission for Status of Women is listed more than one place, not just for the Boards of Commission. So I would mention that. So to be clear, Glendale Power will present in August and then water in September? Um, that is the current schedule, yes. Okay, any other questions about or comments about item number eight? Okay, um, I do have uh, a couple of comments. They should have gone uh, under um, item number three. Would you all indulge me just real quick to sure. provide sure. some comments that are not necessarily on the agenda? Is that okay? Okay. Um, uh, one thing that I wanted to uh, uh, pose to staff to potentially look into is... Um, I've uh, noticed in the city of LA, um, there are a couple of programs and initiatives among uh, or around the idea of car sharing. Um, uh, there are a fleet of vehicles that are all electric, um, that are uh, uh, situated in specific areas within the city that uh, allow for people to share a vehicle, uh, very much like bike share or scooters. Um, there's car share as well. Um, so for people that may need to run an errand uh, and don't necessarily own a car um, or don't want to purchase a vehicle, but they need one maybe once a week to run an errand, um, it's a, a practical and uh, uh, affordable opportunity for people to jump in a car. And because it's electric, it's, it's better than the alternative. Um, so the city of LA has an actual uh, program that's grant funded called Blue LA. Mm -hmm. um, they have their own charging stations. They're des they have designated parking spaces. Um, the ones I've seen most notably is uh, in downtown LA on 7th Street. Um, and then I learned of one more recently that I don't think is associated with the city, but is permitted within the city. It's called Motion. Um, and they are a Hyundai-based um, uh, company, and they uh, set up shop on the west side of Los Angeles. Um, so it's it's something that uh, was uh, that piqued my interest, and I thought something that perhaps Glendale can look into now that we are entertaining the idea of having uh, bike share in the city. Um, this is just another tool in the toolkit to allow people to get around in, a, in an environmentally friendly way. Um, so that's something I'd be interested in, in hearing more about if the city uh, would be interested in pursuing it. And then the other thing I'm, I'm just broadly curious about is, is what our plans could and should be for Earth Day in 2022. Um, there's been a lot of traction in recent time in our city in, in what we should do and what we can do on the sustainability front. Um, and I think 2022 would be a great way to encapsulate all the things that we have been doing, what we can showcase to the community, and really do something significant um, that is public facing. Um, there's a lot of stuff that the sustainability office is doing um, outside of the view of the public. There's a lot of stuff the commission's doing. Uh, council has taken lots of actions in recent time, and uh, I think the general public is largely unfamiliar. Um, and I think it's, it would be an opportunity for us to celebrate the things that we have been doing. Um, so something to think about, um, uh, whether that this morphs into an official event, we have some kind of celebration, um, whatever that may be, just something to put out there and think about for the future. Uh, those were my only two comments. Um, and since, since I started it, I'll give others another opportunity. Do, do other commissioners have comments? Yes, Alex, all really good ideas. Um, I did want to bring something up. I'm sorry, I forgot earlier. 
I have colleagues and friends on the Sustainability Commission from Burbank and um, Pasadena, and one thing a lot of cities now are looking at are food waste, as we've talked about before. I would like to suggest a pilot project for the airport, since all cities are involved in the management of that, and it's a closed environment. Um, be glad to help with that. I know the other commissions would be interested too, but if that's too big a lift, because we'd have to do a lot of research, we'd have to look at you know what lease agreements are in place for restaurants operating on city property, um, who the hauler is. I don't know if it's the city of Burbank or if it's a private hauler, so there'd be a lot of research that has to be done. But I have put together some zero waste guidelines for events, and if we do something in Earth Day, I think it would be only fabulous if we could have a zero waste event and a lot of that of course is controlling the, the food containers you know avoiding the disposables and I'll, I'll pass this around this is just one example it, there are many others out there on the market this is a reusable container it's a US company there is some post consumer recycled content in those containers and the company pledges to take those back they don't actually know how long they last because they're they're newish to the market but they will regrind and make new products out of them and a lot of campuses, UCLA was investigating this, Channel Islands uh, is using those in its cafeteria, um, some veterans hospitals, but I'll, so I'll share with everybody just the outline for a zero waste event, but it would be fabulous if we could, if our Earth Day is truly a zero waste event. And there are some companies out there that have food waste processing equipment that would probably be thrilled to do a pilot project. There's a dehydrator, there's also another one that essentially um, pulverizes the food. The output looks like a very fine powdered coffee, like Folgers coffee, if anybody, <laughs> everyone drinks Starbucks, nobody knows what that look, looks like. But, um, and it can take some paper products, but I just, I think it would be fabulous if we could, you know, work toward a minimal waste event, if not a zero waste event. But it'd be a great project to try, you know, find out what the food vendor's concerns are and things like that, so. But I'll, I'll share those um, that zero waste guide with everybody, and I'm sure we can build on it from there. But yes, I love the idea of showcasing what we're doing. Yes. Um, um, yes, I read in the uh, May 11th uh, minutes to the city council meeting that they had directed staff to prepare a report on legacy trees and heritage trees, and I was wondering if that report has been created yet. I tried to find it through like subsequent uh, staff reports, but wasn't able to find it. Uh, Vice Chairperson Werner, yes, he did ask me to look at that. I will follow up and find out about that for you. Okay. Um, I, I did forget one, one more thing that I wanted to add. Sorry. <laughs> Um, I, I am particularly interested, um, I know we've talked in the past and the city is looking into um, the electrification of our city's uh, vehicle, vehicular fleet. Um, along those lines, I, I'm curious about what our approach is going to be for the regulation of taxis. Um, so during my time on the Transportation and Parking Commission, we did uh, oversee and make recommendations about uh, licenses that needed to be renewed for uh, the taxi companies that were operating in the city. And, I'm, and I, I do recall there being discussions about the uh, efficiency of the taxi companies' fleets. Um, so if, if that is something that is regulated by the city or can be regulated by the city, um, I would like to see what that could look like as we uh, renew taxi companies' licenses uh, that are operating in the city. Um, and I say that because I, I did see not long ago um, uh, Lyft, for example, uh, they are committing to an all-electric fleet by a certain year. I can't remember what that is. Um, and I know, I know those types of companies are not regulated by the city, but, but the, the old-school taxi companies as we know them, they are regulated by the city. Um, so I, I'd like to know how we could tie into that and ensure that those fleets that are operating here are striving towards 100%. Um, uh, greenhouse gas free uh, vehicles. Um, okay, that's all I have, I promise. Uh, any, uh, any other comments? Oh, yes. 
Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, if there are any items in particular from this conversation that you would want to have brought back and placed on the agenda, you have the support of another commission member, or there are two commission members who are interested in seeing those being brought back, um, that's what we would need to move those items forward on a future agenda for you. Um, I note that there was an interest in the car sharing, uh, that LA has the car sharing, so that was one of the items. Um, I don't believe, Earth. what are we going to do on Earth Day 2022? It may be premature to bring something back at an yeah. earlier agenda, probably at a future agenda, if that's the commission's direction. Um, the electrification of vehicle fleet and taxis and the licensing renewals. There was an uh, issue of food waste being brought up, particularly in connection with the, air, the airport, Burbank Airport. There is an airport commission. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the use of uh, reusable containers, uh, the, the movement towards zero waste events, and that would be related to Earth Day, and then the status of the legacy trees, which would be a informational report that would be brought back. So if any of, uh, already um, in our, in the sites of staff to be brought back. Uh, so if any of those, if the com other commission members are interested in having any of those brought back, well, we would need to have that direction from two, yeah, from two commission members. I'm definitely interested in the uh, the car sharing, the for example, the blue car or mm -hmm. uh, other company, whatever options are there, and the uh, fleet electrification uh, question that was brought up by the uh, by the chairperson Bob Rosen. And I, I'd be interested about the airport um, waste too that um, Commissioner Pinkerton brought up. Yeah, and I think um, you know. Inevitably, anything that we discuss here is ultimately going to be folded into a climate action plan. Um, so I, I'm just proactively posing these types of questions. Um, so my intent is to not create a bunch of work for you. If you want to provide a very short, brief, it, it could be even as brief as what you had under eight, item eight, um, as far as updates go. And perhaps if that garners more interest or attention by the commissioners, perhaps we can then bring it and, and ask for a formal uh, report or or maybe we'll want to take action on it or make a recommendation to council. But um, as I pose these questions, my intent is to not create a bunch of work for you. I just want to learn more and have some more information about those items. Does that does that follow? That's the, right. I can create a briefing for you on some okay. of these items, mm -hmm. and then the commissioner, as Julian said, if you want something, a full staff report brought back, um, you could um, motion that and have a second on that, and then we could work towards that. And that would give us time to place it on a future agenda and give staff time to go and do the background report, uh, background research to make sure we provide a comprehensive report. Yeah, that, yeah. that it, mirrors my intent. Okay. Uh, if okay. that mirrors okay. your guys' intent, then yeah. we can all do that in the same fashion. Great. May I ask a question? Who, excuse my ignorance, has the city sponsored a Earth Day event recently, and do you know who organized that within, you know, which department within the city? Um, I do know Integrated Waste Management does sponsor um, America Recycles Days. Um, obviously, we didn't do an Earth Day event last year because of COVID, but I, previously, I believe there was one. Um, but yes, I think it'd be a wonderful idea for the Commission to be able to get in front of the public too at an Earth Day event. So we can start, begin planning that, getting some ideas in front of the Commission, and then you could sponsor us with those ideas, and then we could like build up to April. 22nd, I think it is. So. Um, I don't know if this was in the more recent years, but I, I do remember there was an Earth Day, uh, it could have been up, up to a decade ago at uh, Duke Medjin, I remember there was one. Um, and then uh, more recently, maybe a year or two after that, there was an Earth Day event that was sponsored by the city at Pacific Park. Um, so th there were definitely Earth Day events. I think those were organized by what was then called neighborhood services. Um, so yeah, it's, it's something to look into. So yeah. Um, okay, great. Uh, if there's no other comments, uh, we will move on to item number nine, adjournment. I, I do have one quick question. I, I know that council has been looking at 
the idea of uh, astroturfs possibly for playing fields. Is that something that we should anticipate having to evaluate so I'd have time to research that? Um, Chair Boucher, Supervice Chair Swain. Um, yes, yeah, so the Sustainability Office and Community Service and Parks is currently working on obtaining a full life cycle assessment on AstroTurf versus NaturalTurf. Natural turf. Um, we want to do this so that um, decision makers can make a decision based on the science and data. So we're looking at a scope of work um, in the life cycle analysis from material extraction through transportation, through use, through disposal. And um, <clears throat> we're looking forward to, to um, working on that. We're currently um, reaching out to the local universities, um, LA, UCLA School of Luskin, um, USC, and also um, looking at some consultants who can provide us information on that. So um, yeah, we're looking forward to having that study done. Um, that study will go back to the Community Services and Parks Commission first. Um, and then from there, I suspect um, the Sustainability Commission will be able to take a look at it too, so. Okay, thank you. All right, um, uh, I'm gonna suggest we move on to item number nine. Uh, I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Thank you very much. We're adjourned at 6.49.